Oh God! Amy Sink do it and squid don't care. 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 Hello and welcome to the show that I don't know how to name. It's the Ritual Misery Podcast episode something or rather for Thursday the 7th of September. Um, uh, I'm Amos. Eventually I'll get my shit together. And uh, I got Sean here with me tonight. How you doing, Sean? I'm good. I'm good. But you'll never get your shit together. Man, I've nailed the intro like twice. Yeah. I mean... It's only, it's only, and every time it's been with me. It, um, maybe I don't know. Um, that's that's what she said. Uh, that's the, <laughs> that's the, that's the lie she believed. I don't. What are we talking about right now? Um, Joe Mon is saying Kent looks different. I wouldn't know. I haven't seen him in a week, so uh, <laughs> he probably does because he's probably hammer smashed in Indiana right now. He's on a little bit of a, a, a vacation, going home, taking care of some business and things. Um, so I called my buddy Sean. I was like, "Hey, man." Uh, Actually, I was like, what are you doing Thursday night? And this was like last Thursday. And he was like, I don't know, going to be on your show? And then I didn't even, like, I saw the text. I was like, okay, well, he already knows what's up. And then, <laughs> like, s- five days later, I was finally like, hey, Sean, you, uh, you got time? Uh, let's get some shit arranged. Because, well, I got busy. <laughs> How did you get busy? Well, I mean, that's that's not a question for the internet, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I get busy in a Burger King bathroom. Um, so, man, <laughs> this this last uh. week has been full. It's it's just been crazy. So I'm let, let's go ahead and how let's find out what you've been doing because my week has just been nonstop and I've got pictures to prove it. So how has your week been? Um. I finally get to actually talk about this. So back in July, I lost my job, which is actually like the best surprise I ever received in my life because now I could get away from that corporation I was with. So I can actually breathe again. I can actually say, yes, I worked for that e- evil uh, place. The evil empire? So I've, yeah, to say the least. <laughs> so now it's been, now it's been the fun of getting unemployment by the way i finally found out that my unemployment's actually been denied first time ever that i've ever had it denied and they're just trying to say oh it's because uh you were malicious and i'm like they fired me because their computers broke how's that my fault i mean side the point <laughs> yeah so that's the beginning of my week and then it's like okay let's do the job interviews It is the worst case of blind date speed dating ever (laughs) because they'll do things like sell me this pen, take the pen. And I actually did this. I actually took the pen from the guy's hand. It's a nice pen. Um, Put it in my pocket. It's like, do you have a pen I can borrow? He's like, well, I just get it. Oh, so you don't have a pen? Well, I have this lovely pen that uh, is about $15. (laughs) Would you like to purchase it for me? Nice. And he was like, damn. <laughs> Look, I mean, so it's h- half the game is the, the initial swindle, man. Yeah. It's just like, hey, if you give me the pen, I, you don't have a pen. Now you need a pen. Here's the pen. Right. <laughs> hey, uh, you want to give me that $20 uh, bill? Uh, Do you need a $20 bill? Because I got one. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of that, uh, just uh, it's just been doing nothing but interviews and more interviews and more interviews and more interviews. I've had like three or four a day. So it's just like, okay, go meet this person. Hmm. You smell. I don't like you run away. <laughs> yeah. No, I went where, into an where, interview. Where, 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 the where? guy reeked. Oh, that's, that's just not good manners. No. It's like it's a combination of really bad, like Seven Eleven, Dior, Dior, uh, whatever, and garlic bar- body odor. It's the best way I can explain it. It's like imagine someone rubbed themselves with garlic and then decided not to shower for two days. 
Um, and the California heat. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem with, uh, with the, uh, with the garlic. It's the not bathing for two days. Um, <laughs> so any, any good prospects on the, uh, on the old job front? I got a couple of good ones. Uh, one of them is going to be quite a significant amount of money, mm. but it's a hour and a half drive every per way. Oh, the other one. Yeah. Okay. Money, but it's only a 45 minute dollar, uh, 45 minute, uh, a day drive. Gotcha. So, um, Joe Mon in the chat room says, uh, the smell of a five day old hot dogs on a seven 11 roller dipped in neighborhood hooker sauce. <laughs> that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I, you might've yeah. nailed it there. Joe Mon. you might've nailed it. Yeah. You, it's right there. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, so, okay. So let, I'm, 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 I'm anxious to get into this. All right. What'd you do this week? Okay. So I'm going to cut over to this because hopefully it works. Um, this is me and the wife at the Alaska State Fair. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we went and We're, we saw Third Eye Blind. Very cool. It, it really was. And they they did. Uh, but I got a question actually, for you, huh? Where's your corn dog? Uh, well, I ate it later. Where's your corn dog? I ate it later. Ah. Uh, okay. I ate several of them later. <laughs> <laughs> I like corn dogs. Um, so we went and we we saw that we, we goofed off for a bit and uh, watched the watched the show. It was a good show. They did semi charmed kind of life really early and then made a joke about it. Like, well, we've done the big song, so all of you non fans can leave now. And uh, <laughs> went on to do the, uh, lots of. I mean, of course, they they did all the radio hits. It's about an hour and a half concert. Um, they did all the radio hits and stuff like that. And you can see a standing room only, but that's by design because there's just no chairs. It's like <laughs> we were. I could have thrown a football and hit the, hit the stage. Like we were really close. Plus, I mean, isn't it like a law if you sit down on the ground, your ass will freeze? And uh, you no, get stuck. It, th- this was actually the first cold night, <laughs> honestly. Um, before this had been really nice, and then this night it was just so damn cold. Because um, I'm looking at everybody, they're looking like, okay, it's it, it's it's ice outside. Oh no 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 no! This is like 40s. This isn't even cold yet. <laughs> 40s, not even cold. All right. Well, I mean, it's it's cold for you, but it's not cold for us. Um, yeah, and then of course I did a little video, you know, with the little stuff. Of course, you can't hear it because uh, because I didn't prepare well enough. Um, some people were getting pretty awkward out there. We had one guy look like Brad Pitt's. Uh, when you drunk. say awkward, you mean? I I mean booty shorts going way up that girl's ass, and it it was weird. It was weird. It was, it was kind of gross. Um, so there's a you know, lot, lots of pictures of that. Um, we, uh, we, have you ever been to a silent disco? Once. Uh, it was a part of, uh, it was kind of like the tail end of a, uh, a big event from the guys who do improv everywhere mm. where, uh, basically you get this MP, you download this MP3 and you put it on your phone or put it on your player mm. and you plug in your headphones. And you just follow the directions and there's like hundreds of people doing it at the same time. Mm. And we did one for LA. And then at the end, we're still wearing earphones and they were playing music at the very end. So we, the, the, this was a, a silent disco. And what it was is we had three channels on the headphones. The blue channel was the DJ. The DJ was actually playing live, mixing live on the blue channel. Then you had a green channel and a red channel. And you could see who's playing what. And what you would do is you'd hear this crowd, like this crowd, ah, and you'd flip over to whatever channel they were on, and it'd be this really awesome song. Yeah. So uh, so there's there's me, and <laughs> I, I took some videos of me and the wife, and she was all doing her little dance and shit. And yeah, I, I don't know if anybody else got excited, but I liked it a lot. Um this might be one of them here. Oh yeah, see, she's over there having a good time. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, that you, was. Uh, you're just like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, it was. Uh, that's what a player does. Um, it was a good time, and it was, it was it was a lot of fun. It was really really cool. Uh, I went back the next night. The kids missed it because I, I took the kids to the fair the next night, and. They missed out on it completely, and I, I don't I don't know why or how they just did, did, didn't decide to go, but they missed out because it was pretty fucking awesome. 
Um, and there's sort of beer, beer in there, and there's like there's only a few places you can get beer in at the fair here. And the fair went went smoke free. Not everybody got the message, but enough people did that you actually go through and not get smoked out while you're in standing in line waiting for a ride or whatever. So, the parents wow, amongst really? us like, appreciated that. Was there like smoking areas that you could go to, mm-hmm. or the entire property? No, there was actually like uh, you go to the the edge of the property, and every couple hundred feet or so, there'd be a little outcropping of chain link fence where you could go and smoke, and then go back in. Oh, fair. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, as convenient as it could have been. Um, and no, then I... the, the big fun of the day, I went to work on Tuesday morning and got a message from the neighbor that uh, that we had a tree falling down in our yard. This is from the neighbor's house, looking towards our house. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. You got to take me through your experience. Okay. So you're at work, you're in your office. Mm -hmm. Went to work early. I I went to work at like five that morning. So I get some work done. Okay. So you're typing away. You're, you're cranking it out. You're, Mm -hmm. you're getting your stuff done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then exactly. How does your neighbor tell you? Um, she actually texted my wife who then texted me and said, uh, we might have a problem. <laughs> to to which I said, mm, might? I might care. And she said, oh, no, you do. And then she sent me this picture. And I said, oh, yes, I definitely care. <laughs> Um, for the, for the, uh, the people listening on audio, there's a, there's a tree sitting at about what a, a 20 degree angle towards my house. <laughs> um, yeah. And then the next picture should be from, from the back of the property. Yeah. This is on her way to work. She took this looking back so you can see oh, right where the tree wow. snapped, right where the hammock is. Um, what? and it's leaning on the other tree. So the other tree is actually holding it up at this point. What caused it to snap? That's like, was there a wind storm? Was we there? We had eighty mile an hour winds ripping through the valley. Because, oh, so you were because why not? So you were essentially having a tropical storm. Uh, yeah, yeah, a tropical. tropical storm that only lasted about eight hours, but at eighty miles an hour, who gives a shit, right? Yeah. Um. Okay. So as we progress through here, okay, this next one. There, when I got there, this is the picture of the of the tree that I took. So you can see where it's just snapped, like the base of the tree is solid. Like they didn't, the roots didn't move or anything else. It just right chunked at, over, right up where your hammock is hooked up. Right. Well, the people that lived here before were were idiots and they screwed the hammock into the trees instead of tying them off. <sighs> yeah, but that part of the tree was still supple. It was the opposite side of the tree. Once it once it came down, we looked, and the other side actually had some rot on it. So it Man. wasn't the uh, it wasn't the screw going into it. It was just convenient that it was right there. So there's Does there's the tree to- being held up by the other tree. And uh, the, the the trees are probably these trees are probably let's see my I'm from that from that level. My house is three stories. So that's what about thirty six feet or so. And these trees are probably another fifteen feet taller than my house. So they're probably about that- fifty feet tall. Okay, so you you get there, you see this tree hanging over or holding on to this tree. Yeah, it, it, the tree looks like it's a like it's a worn out fighter and is leaning yeah. in the corner and trying to get catch its breath. Is what it looks like. Oh, so it's Conor McGregor. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got to use that one because I'm so mad about that. Still <laughs> mad. Um. So yeah, this is this is what I see when I get there. Is, is the tree bent over? Um. Not not happy. So how did you, what'd you, what'd you do with it? Is it like still sitting there leaning for the next time that a wind comes and say, oops, poof, and crashes into your kid's b- bedroom? Uh, well, my office is actually that, that bottom door, bottom window down there um, that, that you're seeing right now. This is the, the yeah. back, the other side of the tree from the snapped side, uh, that, that, that window, you see the patio and then underneath the patio, it's like where my office is right there. So my little studio area. <laughs> um w- well we thought it would be great let's see this one we should save this one for last oh no i guess we got i guess that's the one we're going to go with now um this I, I basically i hooked my truck up to it uh with the winch and we tied it off i, I, I grabbed some twine 
and a uh, and a wrench, uh, tied the twine to the wrench, threw the uh, the wrench over some branches, and then used the twine to pull up a rope. Used the rope to pull up the uh, the the other another rope. Then used a ladder to get to where the first the stronger rope was. Tied that with the cinch knot, let that tighten up. Then tied that to my winch, and then used the truck to winch that shit down. And this is what it looked like. <laughs> It's going, it's going, and Geronimo. Poof. So that's uh, that's apparently how you how you get rid of trees that uh, don't want to stand up anymore in Alaska. So, so you use now. Let me get this straight. You use twine, like the little braided, stringy stuff that burns whenever you rub your hands across. Ye- to start with, yes. To you tied that to a rope to. Th- Get the rope around the tree. No, 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 no. I tied the twine. Yeah. It's nylon twine. It's not like, you know, not, it's not like hemp twine or anything. Okay, um, you, I used that, to, I tied that to a wrench, threw the wrench over the branches on top. So the wrench fell down the other side and then tied the, uh, untied the wrench, tied the rope to that side, then pulled the twine back. That pulled the rope up, up and over. Okay, slow down there because I'm trying to catch up here because that's a lot of steps for... <laughs> Why didn't you just tie the rope to the wrench? Uh, have you ever tied a, a, a climbing rope to a wrench? No. No, it's it's the wrench, like it, the rope is heavy. So if you take 50 feet of rope and try to throw that, it, I mean, you're not going to throw it up very high, but I managed to throw that wrench probably 40 feet in the air in order to get it over the branches. And the twine was light enough that it didn't stop. <laughs> You know what? You're a smarter man to me because I would have just said, yeah, screw it. Just push it over. Uh, no, because we would have gone to the house. <laughs> I thought about just hooking the, win- the winch up to the uh, to the tree and just yanking it off. And I was like, that's probably not a good idea. I'm glad we did it the way we did because now I got a bunch of firewood in my backyard. And that's going to be awesome for next summer. Barbecues for days? Um, I don't know if it's good barbecuing wood, but it's definitely going to be good uh, sitting outside in the springtime as it's starting to warm up wood. So. Well, make sure, uh, make sure you let me know so I can fly up there and I'll bring some bratwurst with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just swing on by, man. It's uh, yeah. it's no big thing. Yeah, you know what? I'll start driving right now just to make sure I get there in time. <laughs> just start hitchhiking. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, on a drive up here, we were passing a lot of people who were riding their bikes through Canada, like doing the, the Alcan Highway, the entire thing, on bikes. They're seriously still doing that? Yeah. Yeah. That's- oh, that's like a week's long thing. Yeah, no. I just, I could go on of that for days. It's just, I understand riding it across the country, but it's Canada. Yeah. It's all snow, trees, and well, hills. We, it was in June, so there was no snow. But it was all trees and hills. That's enough for me to say no. Yeah. When when you when you're going in between towns and it's literally like, it's like a ten hour drive in between towns. Um, I'm not trying to bicycle that. No, no, I'm too much of a lazy geek for that. <laughs> Joe Juan says it's better than doing it on a rascal mobility scooter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're probably right. <laughs> I mean, although the the further north you go, the more sunlight you get. So you could always just put a, a solar panel up and just hope that charges it, you know? Uh, I'm not sure it's going to work that well. <laughs> uh, beep, 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 beep. Oh, no, no. You don't want to beep your... You don't want to toot the tutor when uh, when you're... <laughs> when, yeah, when you, when, you, when you ain't got no power because you're just wasting your electricity at that point. Uh, you, ever get, <laughs> you ever go to like a Walmart or something and they get stuck behind someone on one of those where they're just like sitting there forever just looking up mm. and then they look at you and you look up and they look at you and look up and they're just like, why aren't you grabbing what I want for me? Um, no. Oh God, it happens here all the time where people are just like, um, yeah, grab stuff for me because I'm here and I'm going to block up the entire row mm. or the aisle until mm. you get it. You know what happens when people block the aisle in those stupid scooter things with the fat what? lazy asses when they're in the scooter things and they don't want to fucking when they're when they're blocking the aisle when I get behind them? I ram what? them with my scooter. 
Because my Cause fat not, ugly ass is in one of those scooters too. I'm not talking, and the thing is, I'm not talking about the people that actually need it. The people that are like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually immobile or I'm, I'm very unable, and I'm like, I'm with you. I'm right, right there, like no the problem. Bed that's missing a leg. Like you're not, you're not talking about that guy. No, it's the person that ten minutes ago walking into the place, you saw them almost run to the door to get to those mobility carts. Yeah. Because they're about to run out. Right. I and then it. they look at you like, how dare, like, they don't even ask. It's a, how dare you not grab it for me? Even though you don't know what I want. Mm-mm. But you're not doing it. Mm. Th- that's when you reach over and you grab the shit that you know they don't want. <laughs> you know, they're they're up there looking at, like, the peanut butter. They're looking at the peanut butter. They're looking at the peanut butter. You reach over right behind them and grab the spaghetti sauce and put that in their cart and then just walk away. <laughs> like have a have a have a have a have a spaghetti sauce and jelly sandwich, you bitch. Like, <laughs> oh well, man. There was one other thing I did do this week. I almost totally forgot, and oh. I was just thinking about it. Um, I finally decided that I got a new project that I want to do. It's the eternal search for a badass comic. Um, recently. I, I'm I'm just gonna say this sounds a little, a little defeatist. It does because I'm so sick of everything you're reading. It's so washed over. It's so careful. It's so we got to make sure we don't upset anybody. Hmm. And I'm a, and I understand. I'm with you. Got to hit all and the that's points. Great. Yeah, yeah. You got to make everybody happy. But no, I want something that's going to offend somebody. Reason just just for the fact that it's going to offend, just that it doesn't care. Mm. So I finally found a comic that I fell in love with, and they only, and there's like only one book. I they never made a second book. It's fun with milk and cheese. Now you look at it and say, why would I want to read about milk and wait, cheese? Wait, 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 wait. Show the show the cover again. I'm going to explain, describe what I see there. I see. Um, this is, this is a comic. It looks like more like a graphic novel almost. Um, cause it's like, yeah. it's, it's a little thicker bound. It's not your typical comic. I see a carton of milk and, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, what do you call it when there's, uh, they're, they, they, they're humanized. They got like arms and legs. Yeah. There's a carton of milk and behind it is like a block of cheese. And the milk is like, looks like he's screaming. He's like, his spittle is, uh, is milk. <laughs> And then the cheese has like a broken bottle in one hand and a big ass grin. Um, and I really like this cover. You know, you know why I like this cover? Why? Because it's between your face and the camera. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so what? It, oh, what so, what is it about? Essentially, it's the angriest condiments in the world. All they do is go to a situ- they'll just be sitting there in a situation like a state fair hmm. and then they'll riot just because they want to riot they're perpetually drunk they say the craziest things i wonder if and the best part is the art styling is that classic uh oh wow it's it's that classic just black and white hmm. newspaper comic style and they just rip up and tear people's guts out for the fun of it. Um, I, I have to ask the question. I mean, the question begs to ask, is there like a, their arch nemesis is lactose intolerant man? No, there's no arch. Their arch nemesis is you. It's everybody else. Nice. Were you nice today? Yeah. Boof, there's your punch for today. I'm going to knock you out. Did you smile at me? I'm going to stab you now. Jeez. Jesus. When, <laughs> I found this and I was just, I couldn't help but laugh just because it was so obscenely offensive that it was funny for the fact of we don't care. It's just want to have fun. Hmm. Well, I mean, that's, I, I guess that works. A little I guess bit. That works. I mean, if, as long as you're in, entertained by it, I, the last oh, yeah. the last comic that I read, the only comic that I ever read and kept up on, um, was Spawn, and it pissed people off for all the wrong reasons. Like the, everybody that didn't like Spawn didn't like it because they were either racist, didn't understand the whole 
concept of, of the heaven and hell in that particular universe, or uh, they just hated Todd McFarlane because he sold shit at really high prices. Yeah. Like that was, that was like the three arguments against Spawn. Spawn was like the one of the greatest stories mm. series that I ever read. It's like it really it brought everything up into argument. What is good? What is evil? Is there a bridge between the two? Yeah. Is there, you know, could be could good actually be evil? Preacher does the same thing. Mm. Only thing is, Preacher is so it, it's something that I've been noticing in comics lately. It's just so clean so sanitized sanitized yeah everything yeah. in comics now is so extremely sanitized that you have to go to the way way outskirts to even find something that's actually worth just like going oh okay this is interesting hmm. um joe Mon just says that uh he just noticed mst3k playing in the background on your tv <laughs> Uh, I, just, I just gotta say that's the level of geek that Sean brings. Like, yeah. he's like he's like, you know what? It's not gonna be enough. I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna be on the show. It's I gotta add a little something to it for the people that you know just don't like watching. So yeah, <clears throat> there's that. It's like you're bored watching me. Hey, here's some MST 3K for you. Um, Spawn. There was a there was an animated aspect of Spawn later on, and there was the the movie, which was I I I never actually watched the movie. I. It was one of those things where people were like, oh, my God, if you like the comics, you're going to hate the movie. So I just never watched the movie. Yeah. Because I love the comic. It was, it was hard to swallow. It was a bit hard to swallow. You could tell that they kind of like toned it down a lot. It's kind of yeah. like what they did to Constantine. It's, yeah. it's still good. But, yeah, it was severely tor- toned down. Well, so that's one of the things that I liked about Spider-Man, the Tobey Maguire one. Yeah. They didn't try to chomp up at the whole the whole concept of the character. They were like, here's the origin story, the origin story and the very first villain. And they kind of just let you digest that. And then as much as people hate how, how it went in the next two installments, which I still enjoy, it's still my, like some of my favorite comic book movies. It was still like, here's one aspect of it. Here's, you know, they didn't try to throw everything in there at once. Whereas with spawn, it was like, well, we're going to add everybody in there because we're only going to get one shot at this. We got to incorporate the entire thing. And that's, that's not a proper treatment for, for a, a, a long form comic like that. Well, it's not even about that. They, something happened. Like when Superman first came out, it was a brand new thing where we're not really a brand new thing, but a, a good attempt at a superhero movie. They you, finally you're, something. You're talking about like 19, what, 1979 Superman, right? Yeah, 1980, yeah, 1979, 1980 Superman with Christopher Reeves. Yep. You've it's something you could when you watched it, you believed in it. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like the 1970s Spider-Man which was uh parkour but improperly done. Right. It was like finally a movie and then Batman came out and people realized that oh, you can actually do a great story with a mainstream comic character. Mhm. When by the time Spider Man came, Spider Man is like, okay, we need to learn how. To, here's how you tell a great origin story. Oh, by the way, here's how you merchandise the living hell out of it. Right. Because well, see, Batman, because I, I didn't Batman see a did lot of the merchandising because I was in Japan at the time, so a yeah. lot of the merchandising aspect of it was lost. I just, I literally just got to watch the movie and live in in what the movie presented. And as a person that I've read a few Spider Man comics in, in, back in the day but I'm not like a avid Spider-Man follower, you know? Yeah. So for me, I, I watched it with Kent and Kent was like, well, they nailed it on these, 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 these points, but they missed it on this one and this one. But looking back, I was like, okay, but what did, what did it take away from the movie? And he was like, well, nothing. Yeah. Like they hit all the points. It was just, to hit. Yeah. The, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man one and two really hit everything just damn near perfect. Mm-hmm. It was when they go, Oh, wait a minute. We made so much money off of all the action figures and the merchandising from one. Right. We made a lot more from it from two. Well, hey, on three, let's add a couple of more villains so that way we can really, well, really and, make. And that's some what money. happened. It started getting that that scope. It, it started it started yeah. coming back out. It wasn't just Toby Maguire, um, uh, Kirsten Dunst, and you know one villain. Yeah, you know which led into the second villain, which played perfectly for Spider Man Two. 
by the time they hit Spider Man three, they're like, we need Venom and we need we need let's let's get uh let's get the fucking Silver Surfer in here and and hey yeah. is that dude that played Spawn free because we'll throw him in here too you know and it, what man it, what happened was it still ended up a decent movie it was still pretty good actually I, I thought I enjoyed it but you could tell that their focus had gone gone awry. Yeah. And then the second series went with uh, Andrew Garfield. They did not learn their lessons. I didn't watch they it. Didn't, it was, trust me, you're better off. You're so better off. It was just the worst you know what I'm figuring four out? hours of my life. What I'm figuring out is if you want to influence me, the most direct way to influence me is by telling me that something is really disappointing. So tell me a movie is really disappointing or that you wasted your time watching it. Because I am so easy to turn away from any sort of like like visual media. Oh my mm-hmm. god, like that, that that TV show that sucked. Oh well, fuck it, I'm not watching it then. Yeah, like quick. I don't I don't know why it is that way. I just realized that about myself. But if we if we tell you it's great, you got to check it out. You're like, yeah, maybe. Right. Then it, never get no the the best thing if you actually want me to watch it is not mention it at all or mention it in passing to other people but not directly to me, like yeah. <laughs> like Stranger Things. Everybody said it was awesome, but nobody told me I had to watch it, so I ended up watching it. You know, exactly. and it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so these yeah. days you're just gonna trust us and say, okay, fine. Well, like Kent, Kent was like uh, OA was amazing until the last episode. Like the entire time he's talking about it, I'm like, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Then he's like, the last episode fucked the whole thing up and it, it sucks. And I was like, okay, well, now I can't watch it because it's bad. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I know I, it, there's just no winning. Never, never win. Zero never. win. Zero win. Um, uh, you also, uh, we're, we're, we're like, we're like halfway through the show and we're still talking about shit we did this week. Um, <laughs> you're 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 making a mixtape, a playlist. Uh, you're getting some old '90s yes. songs and uh, throwing those, smashing those together, and see what happens. Oh yeah, uh, I decided. A friend of mine just said, "Hey, we want to throw a party for my your friend's birthday, hmm. uh, but your your restraint is nothing but alternative mod rock for the 1990s." Okay, so the entirety of '90s. No, no, 1990 to 1995. I'm like. Oh, so the depression portion. Yeah. They're like, what? And I go, do you really? And I started creating it just to, just a just a title list. And he goes, oh my God, I want to slit my wrist just looking at this list. Oh, yeah. Cause you, you got, you got Nirvana and Blind Melon. Mm hmm. You know, both those were done before 95. Uh, I mean, you had Nine Inch Nails at that same time. Uh, Jeff right. Buckley just committed suicide at that point. Um, uh, well, yeah, because you had Pearl Jam was already beginning the recession. Mm-hmm. Um, Stone Temple Pilots were already like on shaky ground because of uh, Scott Weiland's decision to continue with uh, whatever opiate he was using at the time. Yeah, like like just uh, the alt, the alt rock scene was getting was getting was aging very very poorly when you hit mid 90s and then to add on top of it every song was so utterly how how destroyed i am by so and so yeah or how destroyed i am by society garbage uh, I'm, o- I'm only happy when it rains it rains yeah uh, like... poe angry johnny uh mhm Radiohead. Uh, okay, first of all, Hole was I just dry. Hole was depressing in and of itself. I don't care. Hole. I don't care what you liked. Hole was shit from the from Hole the very beginning. Hole was depressing because of her. I could never stand that band. It, it, oh my she, god, her voice grates on your ear. So I'm sitting here creating playlists and I'm listening to songs I've hated, just because I was like, oh yeah. god, this is so. Soul crushing, and, and then you know the the worst part about it is you hit mid nineties. That's like right when the cranberries hit it big, and you're just like, this is yeah. this is all we got. This yeah, is 95. this is the epitome of what we have for mid nineties alt rock. Come on, yeah. Well, ninety five is right when you saw like Spin Doctors finally come alive, and you finally saw like uh, mm. Toad to Watch Sprocket finally release some songs that weren't on the slower side. 
But that was uh, Green they, Day they were, came around. In. They weren't like mainstream alternate alternative though. They were like almost this. Uh, uh, they, they were like an REM inspired alternative as opposed yeah. to the grunge. You know, they were because grunge is like the heavy part of alternative, and then you had this this like. Uh, uh, REM is like the best example of the other side of alternative music, and you know whether you, whether you liked them or not, they they were breaking ground with every record. That's how old I am. I still call them records. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. <laughs> wow. But and finally, I started getting close to the end of the list. I'm I'm building the oh, perfect playlist. Depeche Mode. Oh yeah. Depeche Mode. Actually, like, they would piss me off because one one Depeche Mode song would come out and it'd be like, "Oh my god, this is awesome! The video is awesome! The music's awesome! The lyrics are awesome! There's such a message here!" And then the next the next song that would come out in the radio for Depeche Mode was like, "Hmm, are you drunk or am I drunk? Because this sucks." <laughs> like it was always a mixed bag with well, Depeche that, Mode. That is, everything post Violator was like that. That, that like pre Violator, mm. almost everything they did was pure gold. It was great. Everything was depth. Everything was gritty, tasty. Their beats, their melodies were just so perfect. Well, that and they they were pushing lyrics through through guitar amps and shit. Yeah, and just to get a little bit of a different sound and stuff. That underwater sound for a uh, for oh shit, what was that song? Um, uh, Rumors or um. Question of lust, or I don't remember. Either way, I'd have to look it up. But all of a sudden, right, at, I'm, there's this trend that I started noticing in making this playlist, which is 1994. Everybody wants to die. Something happened immediately, like six months after Kurt Cobain died. All of a sudden, people started creating happy music. Hmm. It is the craziest thing because I'm noticing because I'm I'm looking at playlist off of billboard 100 so this got released on this week um uh, and you saw the spin doctors go boom and hit some uh like happy happy stuff hmm. and then you saw Sue goo goo dolls come around and then you saw uh so i'm sitting here making this playlist trying not to kill myself <laughs> Try not to remember can, too much of high school. <laughs> yeah, really. Because <laughs> you and I both know how much high school sucked for me. <laughs> and just realizing that I would stop halfway through and I'd go back to like doing something else. I'd listen to regular radio. Mm. I'm just like, my God, how did any of us survive the 90s at this point? And for you and me, the early 90s was high school. Like yeah. 90, 19, late 1990 was when I entered high school and I graduated in 95 or however that math yeah. works out, whatever the fuck is, you know. Th- you that, were 95, I was 94. Right. Uh, but I mean, it's like 95 and- to 94, 94, 93, 93, 92, 92, 91. So 91 is when I entered high school proper. Um, but yeah, that whole, like how did, because we were hitting, it, oh my gosh. I'm jealous of the people that like graduated I mean, in you like take, 89. You take- because they graduated high school at like the, yeah. the height of Michael Jackson, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally <laughs> different right. musical tone. It really it is. I mean, I don't know what the hell happened. All of a sudden, even even the pop songs are depressing in nature. Yeah. So yeah, Cheryl Crow comes out and she she's singing these happy songs about melancholy, and it's like, what am I supposed <laughs> to do with this song? I'm supposed to be angry. I'm supposed to be sad. I'm so confused. Yeah. That could be why I was listening to a lot of country then. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was all Garth and, and Toby Keith and shit, man. <laughs> oh, God, you tortured me with that stuff. Too. I, would, I would go from Dre to Garth to, to Nirvana. Like that was, that was like a rotation for me. Oh, man. And that, was, that was back in the time when you can actually call the radio station. I want to make a request, and I want to dedicate it to... to this girl, because uh, she's the best thing in my life. And then you call the next week. Yeah, forget that girl. That This song's dedicated to this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had radio dramas going on just in our little click. <laughs> oh, that was so sad. Oh, so good. Um, hey, there's uh, there's there's something else going on this next week that's kind of got both of us geeked out. Oh, uh, Joe Mon says Lannis Morissette. 
I, yeah. Jagged Little Pill came out in what, 94? It really hit yeah, stride in 95 and like late 95, early 96 is when, well, I guess, I guess 95 maybe even. Um, but late, ni- late 95, early 96 when, when that album really hit a stride. And then, um, so I would, I would say, I would call Alanis Morissette more of a late 90s kind of, no, kind of deal. No, there's two Alanis Morissettes. There's pre 96 and post 96. Pre 96, she was really aggressive with her music it it was kind of punchy post 96 she became uh she went back to what's Canada. her name yeah she became sort of like a what's her name from uh 10,000 maniacs just really oh, uh the merchant. yeah thank you really whiny sarah mclaughlin did the same thing something happened all of a sudden they went all went on tour yeah. for the little fair and immediately after it Every song became so sob worthy. Well, you just said it, Lilith. Like that was yeah. that was it. Like that's like it, it wasn't it wasn't girl power anymore. It was like celebrate celebrate our emotions. It was really of course I, I mean like Tori Amos. I was never into Tori Amos. I just thought she was just the worst. She was a, like- she was a crooner about forty years after the crooners should have gone away. You know, so. if Tori Amos would have came out now, I think she would have had a whole lot better of a following. She uh-huh. was like right at the in between point where if she was t- twenty years earlier or twenty years later, yeah, she would have been the biggest hit in the world. So, so let me ask you this, man: Why don't we have a music podcast? Because this is fun. Um, <laughs> the the other thing that had is, has this geeked out this week, uh, this week coming up is the release of the Galaxy Note Eight and the announcement. Well, the predicted announcement of the iPhone 8 or edition or something. Um, and, and you brought this up because I think you and I have had some discourse in the past about how I'm an Apple guy. You're an, you're a non Apple guy. You're not necessarily an Android guy. You're more of a non Apple guy, which is, which is cool. I understand. Yeah. I respect that. Okay, cool. It makes it fun to, 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 you know, to smash each other in the face with facts and figures and, all that kind of stuff and, and kind of joke back and forth. But even because I noticed this maybe a couple of days ago that as, as amped up as I am for this Apple announcement to see what comes next, I'm kind of over it already. Yeah. And then you came to me with in the show notes tonight, kind of saying the same thing about the galaxy note eight. <laughs> it's Oh my God. How many times do they have to recreate the same phone? The only change, the only major changes they've done is the chip that's in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bigger chip. In the Note 8, they did fix that battery issue, which I predicted back in the Samsung S6, well, which is when I looked at it, it does not have any cooling to it. To be fair, they didn't have a choice to fix a battery issue. That was... Yeah. That was... that was The, the, the yeah. brand depended on that. Oh, not Samsung. Note. The, the, the yeah. Galaxy Note brand depended on them coming out with a, with a massive uh, a non-battery issue. I mean, it's it's one of those things where they had three major problems. One is they don't have enough cooling in it. They made the phone so small, so thin Mm -hmm. that you can't if you have a case on it, you can't bleed off the heat. There are so many, especially if like you're in L.A. L.A. hit like one hundred and twelve last week. My phone could not handle it. It just said, no, uh -uh, done. It's too hot for me. (laughs) And that's just turning it on. Because if you have any, it can't bleed off any of the ambient hint. And then from there, if you charge it up, that even adds more heat because the energy being poured back into it. Right. And then if you're charging it and using it at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're screwed. You're burning your hand. You're burning your leg. Exactly. And we're starting <laughs> you're to burning see. burning the plane the down, man. You're burning the plane down. <laughs> <laughs> And now we're seeing the same thing with Apple's. People are starting to complain that the Apple phones are getting too hot now, mm. that they're just, they can't bleed off that heat. They're having the same issues. I, I, I My only thought on that is, and of course, I, this is just my experience because I've been using, uh, I've been iPhone exclusive since the 3GS when my Droid X broke and I went full Apple all the time on the, I guess the 4. Um mm-hmm. My yeah, my Droid X, my Motorola Droid X 
the original one, the the candy bar one, was my last non Apple phone that I was using. Um, all I can say is that some of that is self imposed because I've never. I've never had my phone overheating unless I'm like playing a game while charging it, which that that's kind of, I mean, that's almost to be expected, right? Like if you're playing a graphic intensive game while you're charging a battery, you you, you might get a little heat in there, but I've yeah. never had it get overly warm or, or uncomfortably hot or anything else unless it was in a case and the case, exactly. that it, the case that I would put in would be, you know, super thick, non breathable rubber or something like that. Like, and you almost have to do it because did you check out like with these? I'm scared to buy one. Did you check out the prices on them? Oh, oh, uh, yeah. Like the the Galaxy Note Eight starts at nine fifty before well, yeah. before carrier discounts or whatever else. Like the base price is nine fifty. The expected iPhone base price is nine ninety nine. I can buy a debt a full gamer's desktop for less than it costs to buy a phone. Yeah. That will do. Ha- it's getting insane. I mean, I understand making a profit, but this is insane. Mm-hmm. And they know that they can do it. They know that they can charge it. So yeah. you're starting to see the prices start matching up now. Where they're start- because beforehand it used to be Android would be like two. Th- I mean, their base starting price, their MSRP, is two three hundred, and the iPhone was six seven hundred. There's a huge gap. Yeah. Now you're seeing that gap shrink up. They're both containing new pens technology. Their screens are both are all bezel to bezel. Mm. They both they're becoming the same exact phone. Well, th- this is just like Congress. The further apart Congress goes from each other, it's like the ruler. I don't have a yeah. You know, the, the further you go from each other, the closer you kind closer of closer you get. Yeah, and and. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm happy that we have two Premier phones. I'm happy we we have two Premier phones. We have the Samsung line and we have the the Apple line. I'm just happy we have two because at least that's that. I mean, that's at least more than what we have in Congress. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right now in Congress we have one that's. That, I don't want to get political. Um. I well, Joe Mon is asking if we have any love for the L, for LG no. and. LG is a nice third place. Yeah. We I need mean, a third place. LG is not, they're not, they're not pressing the envelope as much as, as Samsung was for a long time. They're kind of playing it safe, but I mean, they're selling product. And I believe, I might be wrong on this. I believe LG is building the Pixel. I think the yeah. Google Pixel is, is actually LG hardware with LG's Google branding. Playing, LG learned from Motorola. They're playing the smart game. They're not, they're not in the race because they don't need to be. Same thing with Huawei. Huawei is another uh, Korean built uh, mm-hmm. phone system that is just, we're going to do our thing. We're going to build a great product. Once you guys finally figure out that we're better than everybody else, we'll gladly accept you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we noticed that there's been so many improvement with their watches, so many improvement with, uh, with everything they do. And they just, instead of spending money to fight this big battle, they're putting to get into building the better product. Yep. Yep. So, and uh, I mean, LG has been, they've been having some really nice phones for a long time and they've been on the really nice screens for a long time, which you would expect from, from LG. Um, and that's really the most exciting part about this for, for any of, of any of this for me is the, the new OLED screens. Like yeah. I'm really excited about the new screens. Yeah, everybody's got a very excellent screen. I mean, I'm taking I was taking pictures with my phone that are ten times better than most of the cameras. I mean, they're getting better than a lot of DSLRs out there now. And ah, you're starting it's, to it's the sensor size. They'll never win the sensor size war. Well, of course not, because in order to do that, they gotta build a huge body for it. Right. But you're still getting some very, very excellent yeah. clean well, images um, for the sizing. The, the the way that it works out is the you know you know what the best camera in the world is, which one? The one you have with you. Yeah. Which is why smartphones are so fucking prevalent right now, because you're always carrying around with you. You've always got that camera, and even if it's the worst picture, you still got the picture. Exactly. So, and that's what makes it so great. That's I can't tell you how many times I just wished, oh, I should have brought it. Oh, I should have. That's what. Yeah. 
that's what I loved about the new cell phones. Now you can actually start doing that. You can start yeah. taking video. Uh, so what do you think the uh, the next big, like the big revela- revolution, the big ma- major change, regardless of company or whatever else, what's the bi- next big thing for smartphones or for, for, for cellular phones? It's got to be battery. We're becoming so dependent on these phones that yeah. you're going to have to see one or two things. One is everybody's going to go to a completely, you know, sort of like remember back when we were kids, when you made a long distance call, it cost you mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had to worry, oh, God, how many minutes have I been on that? That 25 cents a minute. You saw that go away. Yeah. You saw texting. Remember, every text you sent was 10 cents. Someone sent you like five texts. You almost killed them because the next thing you know, you got a hundred dollar bill coming in. Mm-hmm. That went unlimited. Companies got to get over themselves and quit throttling people and quit playing this data plan game because soon it's not going to be about uh, 1G, 4G, 5G. It's just going to be straight wireless, um, straight uh, internet wireless. Where I already I spend most of my phone calls are done through Skype or done through uh, mess- Facebook Messenger now. It's a lot easier. I just like, yeah, pop it on the video. I'm good to go. Yep. I don't even have to deal with uh, like anything else. I don't have to worry if you have an iPhone. I can still video message you. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I actually get a cleaner call than on my cell phone. What, what, so I have a feeling it's... What Wonder Mom says, get off the internet. I have to make a call. <laughs> I, I gotta get that sound effect uh saved on my on my little soundboard over here um oh my i i hooked up a, I, I hooked up a speaker to my modem once and just let it go and yeah just to piss my dad off one day mm. oh speaking of dads i gotta uh i'm gonna send this to him uh today's actually his birthday oh i totally almost forgot until 10 minutes before the podcast. So I was sitting there while you and I are just talking. I'm just like, dad, I'm really sorry, but happy <laughs> freaking birthday, you asshole. So I'm going to send him a link to this. Hopefully he'll watch and hopefully he'll say happy birthday. Or he'll accept my happy oh, birthday. You'll send. finally make your daddy proud. No, never. Come on. What are you thinking? No. You know who you're talking to. <laughs> um, speaking of birthdays, uh, Ritual Misery is coming up on a birthday very soon. So um, if you have a favorite memory of Ritual Misery over the past almost three years, uh, why don't you go ahead and shoot that to us at podcast at ritualmisery.com. Uh, give us a t- little t- episode number and time hack. And uh, if I get the time, I'll make a little... If we get, get enough submissions and I get the time, um, I'll make a little uh, little little vignette or whatever you call it when you smash some some videos and and uh audios together i already know mine mine's that one time you were dumb enough to let me on the show uh and it keeps happening i don't know what the fuck is going on what the hell are you thinking dude (laughs) come on hey um so uh before we close out here tonight um we don't we don't have a ted talk we 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 actually bounced ideas back and forth and i think all the ideas we had we'd already done so we said screw it and (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's how you know you're getting old and you're like ah do we do that uh we did one close enough like it i don't i, I, I don't remember um we have several yeah, guests lined okay. up very very soon in the next several weeks next week we have musician and podcast legend kevin mcleod coming on the on the ritual misery po- podcast mm. if you listen to podcasts you've heard kevin mcleod's music that's all i'm gonna say yeah. there because holy shit um dude we- he is ever He's everywhere. You see him all over YouTube. He, you see him. I, you cannot go anywhere without hearing one of his little jingles mm. somewhere. Uh, Joe Mon says it's a montage. Sounds good. Looks good on paper. Uh, yeah. The week after that, we have author Nick Britton. He's uh, he, he writes books from the points of view. I don't say the points of view. He writes books with the consideration of little kids and things like that in mind, like how you can learn life lessons from just keeping it simple, like a little kid. Um, I say that, but I actually haven't read his books. I've just read the titles and read the summaries and it sounds awesome. I'm looking forward to having him on the show. And then, um, first week of the second week of October, we have snubs coming on world traveler and hacker extraordinaire, Shannon Morse from hack five coming on the ritual misery podcast. That's going to be, how'd you pull that? 
How'd you pull that one off? Um, she doesn't do a lot of interviews be, because I don't wait for people to give me ideas for for uh, for for Amos's balls. I just go out there and reach out there and say, "Hey, uh, we want you on the show." So, yeah, have you gotten to any of my any of my Amos ball suggestions? Uh, no. I've uh, every Amos's ball suggestion has been submitted in one way, shape, or form, and. All the ones that have come back, I've I've talked about. Like that's just how it is. Uh, I, some of them I'm getting to like uh, the, what are the 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 YouTube uh, the couple uh, the 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 cosplay couple on YouTube. I forget what the hell they're called. Yes, screen team. That's screen team. I, yes. Yeah. Um, if you I gotta get them on here. If I email them one more time, they're gonna get a restraining order on me. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I got I got to calm down at some point. Um, uh, somebody just uh, suggested uh, one to me over Twitter, and I I was like. That sounds awesome, and then I can't find it now, so I gotta go. I gotta go back through there and find that shit. Um, and then for episode for episode one forty three, we have a very special surprise. It's gonna be a surprise guest. I'm gonna give you a hint though. It's on episode one forty three. For those those old folks that might remember beeper codes. Um. Oh shit. So uh, that that's your only hint on that one. And uh, that's I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, Sean, now we are at the, the end of the show and you like to not be part of social media, but then you're you're part of ritual misery now. So uh, I tell you, I tell you, what, I how, how people going to find you, man. That, that's all you, like, like some, somebody out there is like, you know, that Sean, dude, I need to talk to him more. Uh, I, I like people that play I, MST3K in, in the background uh, when they're just sitting around the house in their underwear. I, I'm going to put this challenge out. You know, I've been trying to think of a way to some name to come up with for Twitter and all that stuff. So I tell you what, I will get a Twitter. I promise I will get a Twitter, but you guys are going to get it for me. Mm. I will use it. I will send out stupid ass tweets that will make you say, I don't know why, <laughs> but one of you guys. So what I want you guys to do is bug the hell out of Amos here with what my Twitter is going to be. And next week, you'll find out when we say, okay. Wow. Sean's balls. Yeah. Really. It's, it's, it's spelled wrong, but it's we'll, we'll fix that. <laughs> I'm Irish. Okay. There's no S H. There's no W it, it's, it's, you got to spell right. No lazy American spellings. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's, so, Sean's balls 420. I think I think I think Joe Mon's <laughs> onto it. I think he, he might he might get this one too. Um, okay, so y- you can tweet me at Ethan Kane and uh, I'll take suggestions for Sean's balls for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I- I'll, I'll take the suggestions and uh, and we'll compile them. We'll, we'll see uh, we'll see what comes up with. So tweet me uh, at <laughs> at Ethan Kane and uh, E T H A N C A I N E. Because I don't like easy spellings either, either, <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get that one figured out. Uh, you can always follow the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter, and you can email the show podcast at ritualmisery dot com. Uh, you can cruise on over to ritualmisery dot com for everything else that we're doing. Uh, I, okay, so Undaunted is on the Gunna Geek Network. It's a Ritual Misery show. It's on the Gunna Geek Network, and I got I got to say, man, those are some amazing people. If you haven't checked out Gunna Geek. Uh, and all the shows they have over there, cruise on over to gunnageek.com. They got tons of shows. Um, ours is, or mine is last because it's alphabetically ordered. So I'm at the very tail end. So by the time you get to me, if you haven't found another show that you like, let me know and I'll let them, th- let them know they need to start a new show. So gunnageek.com, cruise on over by there and check out Undaunted, man. It's, it's awesome. It's, 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 it's so much fun. Um, I've been actually and- using it for my podcast, uh, kind of a uh, classroom lately. Mm. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> there's, there's a lot of great advice. There's a lot of bad advice. And, and if you can't tell the difference between the two, neither can we. And that's why we're, that's what the whole show is about. Um, and snubs is actually going to be on that show too. She's already said yes to that. We just got to book up a time. So she's going to be on there as, eventually as well. Um, and if you're a podcaster out there and you would like to be on undaunted and share your pod journey. Um, I don't know if I coined that term or not, but I'm taking it over. Pod journey is mine. Um, if you'd like to share your pod journey, uh, by all means, just let me know uh, at Undaunted Cast and or Undaunted Pod. It's one of the two. Just look up Undaunted on Twitter and, and you'll find it, or just find me at Ethan Kane. 
and we'll get you on there, man. It's, it's a it's a fun show. It's really good. It's only half an hour to forty five minutes of your time, and uh, all the pressure's on me. So let's make that happen. If you're out there and you're podcasting, let's do that. Or if you don't podcast anymore, I would really like to hear that story. And if you are thinking about a podcast, let me get in on that one early. So as soon as you launch your podcast, we can do a, a an undaunted and get that aspect as well. Get that that point of view as well. Um, nice. And of course, you can find this episode and all our other episodes at our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can comment and, and uh, make fun of us and everything else over there. Don't forget to leave your five-star shitty reviews on iTunes because that's fun. Like iTunes reviews are like, everybody asked for it. None of it matters. I don't think any of it matters. That's why we have the five-star shitty reviews. Give us five stars and then tear us apart in the description because why not? That matters to Start somebody, with- and they're, 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 I'm sure we've had guests turn us down because we have shitty reviews on iTunes, which is, I mean, awesome. If they can't handle that, then they shouldn't be on the show anyway. <laughs> um, and speaking of Kevin McLeod a little earlier, thank him. We thank him for being able to use his music and uh, all that he's done for the podcasting world in general, and we'll talk more about that next week when we have him on the show. Um, we I really appreciate you listening, Sean. Thanks for coming on and co-hosting with me. And uh, for me, for Sean, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs)